We're being joined by Mike Ejirofo this morning on The Breakfast as a security analyst. Uh, we'll be looking at some security concern. Good morning, Mike Ejirofo. Good morning. Well, let, let's, a little bit of a background, you know, to the conversation. According to reports, no fewer than 6,154,000 6, Firearms are in the possession of civilians and the country. A report by the SBM Intelligence has actually revealed the number of small arms in circulation in Nigeria in the hands of civilian and non-state actors has been estimated at 6,145,000, while the armed forces and law enforcement collectively account for 586,000 firearms. Uh, this is the report. Now, uh, this has also made a, uh, you know, a conversation, a trend of arms proliferation in Nigeria as an impact on the country's internal security, which has led to violence, deaths, injury of citizens. Already, Nigeria is battling an increasing insecurity, especially in the northeast region of the country, and is the throws off a dead long Boko Haram insurgency that has left tens of thousands dead and more than millions displaced. In, a, in recent months, the northwest region is also a hotbed of wanton killings, banditry and kidnappings. Now, non-state actors say that the proliferation of small arms and light weapons have been attributed to the spate of insecurity in the country. Meanwhile, the federal government has approved the establishment of the National Center for the Control of Small arms and light weapons. I mean, it was actually approved. It has been established. There's also a legislation to that effect from last year, which has actually not even uh, seen the light of day. But however, uh, that's what the situation is. We have Mike Ejiofo. I Like I mentioned earlier on, many thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'd like to share your thoughts on this uh, report and development of six point uh, something million arms in the hands of civilians. Well, it's uh, very worrisome and disturbing, you know, especially in the West African sub region. Now, we have such an uh, amount of uh, legal arms uh, in the hands of uh, non state actors, and it's quite disturbing. And, uh, I think uh, if they can be more armed than uh, uh, government uh, forces, it costs for real concern and the need for immediate control of such uh, arms. And I think that's why the federal government set up that committee to mop up uh, illegal arms in society. All right, uh, Mr. Ejo, for this is um, ab ab about more than 10 times more, uh, more small arms or light weapons in the arms of non-state actors than you have in the arms of state actors. Um, in your opinion, in your, in your view as a security expert, um, the issue of, of, of weapons proliferation in Nigeria has been a hot subject over the years. I think maybe these days we're becoming more used to it. But some years ago, it was a hot issue. And people were afraid. I mean, the days of Basenjo, even before Basenjo, there were attempts to, to address this. Um, now it's, we have weapons everywhere, banditry, all over. What is responsible for the current situation? Well, there are a lot of uh, reasons uh, responsible for this. One is our uh, foreign borders and uh, the displacement of uh, the rebels and uh, some of these uh, non state actors from the Sahel. So they, they bring in their arms and uh, with the emergence of uh, Boko Haram and uh, the fraternization with uh, Isa, Islam and uh, ISIS, you know, who are also introducing us. I think that accounts for the big influx of uh, small arms and light weapons into the region. Uh, like I said, it's quite disturbing, and the uh, government is doing everything possible to see how these uh, arms are controlled. Because if they are not controlled, you know, the security of the citizens cannot be guaranteed. 
And that's why you have a more a, a, a more incident of um, kidnapping, you know, because they have arms in there. And uh, not just uh, small arms and light weapons, we have this heavy weapon. We will call the, the that uh, Israel wants uh, some time ago, a broader aircraft, you know, even though the, the officers uh, managed to escape. So it's, it's really disturbing. And, uh, I think the government is worried about it too. Most of when we are going to have uh, elections soon, and uh, if you allow these arms to continue to remain the arms of uh, these non-state actors, they are most likely to uh, disrupt the election. And uh, don't also forget that uh, Boko Haram does not believe in. Uh, democracy and uh, uh, Western education. So they do everything possible to ensure that uh, these uh, uh, elections are disrupted. Uh, uh, I also note that, uh, you know, with the recent government offensive on the, on the bandits through area of bandits, which I've always been advocating for, I think we are to get a result for very soon. Uh, a lot of uh, arms are seized and uh, are shot. But I believe that uh, our security forces should ensure that they at least continue to consolidate on the gains made so far. Mm. But uh, I'd like you to tell us, your security expert, I mean, how is it that 6 million firearms is in possession of uh, civilians, uh, when you compare that to what you have the law enforcement agent having, it's less. We're looking at uh, 586,000, and we're talking about 6,145,000. That's a lot. How did this arms actually get into the hands of civilians who are non-state actors? Uh, honestly, I know that uh, there are a lot of arms uh, within the sub-region. Well, I don't have the exact fact now, whether they're up to six million, and that the, the, our security forces only have 500 and uh, something thousand. I'm not too sure of that fact. I'm not disputing it. I don't have it. Fact. But uh, six million is a huge number, if you come to think of it. I'm not too sure. And I don't know the thoughts. I'm not uh, looking it up to see if uh, it's actually correct. I'll have six million, over six million in the, uh, Parts of no state actors, why the state actors have only uh, 500 something thousand. But I don't even doubt it. All right. Uh, um, and uh, this, this particular report has been on for some time. Um, it's placing Nigeria at par with uh, countries like Afghanistan and Syria. I mean, Afghanistan, you don't know what's going on in Afghanistan. They've had a series of wars right from the day of the Russian invasion of Afghanistan, the Soviets right up to the American invasion of Afghanistan, up to the, the time the Taliban came in and, uh, of course, took over and the Western forces ha had to retreat or retreated. That's, that's well documented. We look at Syria. They've been having a civil war for donkey years now. Um, Nigeria is not at war. So I want you to, 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 look, to look at this, that Nigeria has been put uh, on the same level with this report, which has been up for a couple of years now, uh, at par with Afghanistan and Syria, that force, so some people should be really uh, uh, very scary. But we're not at war, so how come you know we've been placed at par with Afghanistan and Syria? Well, you see, uh, the in this war of terrorism, you know, they have the uh, indices of measuring, and uh, only last week I think the Global Terrorist Index ranked Nigeria number two. You know, I, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's quite disturbing because uh, I think uh, only last year or so we are rated uh, much higher over that level. Well, last week we still were on the second. And uh, I seem not to agree completely with that uh, rating because you remember the height of these uh, 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 terrorist uh, fights in Nigeria. Uh, we have series of attacks in uh, the northeast. We have in the northwest, north central, and uh, a little to the southwest and uh, maybe 
would be served in which is a different uh, bug and it's not fully terrorist activity, but this agitation. But uh, how we came to second position is what I cannot understand. But I cannot question that because they had their industry, they had their yardstick for measuring uh, these, uh, 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 these areas and uh, releasing their results. So, as it is, but we in Nigeria know that at least we are making some progress in terms of uh, the rating and fighting of uh, these uh, terrorists. Uh, you know, uh, 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 the the issues in the Sahel, maybe northern part of Africa, or uh, northern part uh, countries in the north of Nigeria. Um, um, but we know that in, in, in the times past, not too long ago, you know, we've seen uh, uh, the, the discovery of, of weapons being imported in containers at the Nigerian ports. We are aware of this. You know, it's happened a number of times. You'd see that they said that some cars have been brought in in the containers. They saw a lot of weapons there. Um, we've also seen, I know we're talking about small weapons, light arms, but we've also seen, you know, in recent times also a state governor who had a consignment of weapons being taken to government house. Uh, uh, apart from, I want you to talk about this, apart from the, the situation in the northern part of the country, we have also uh, this report looking at the situation in the southern part of the country. How are weapons making their way to 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 states in southern Nigeria, which are far from from the northern borders. I mean, don't they go through the roads? Are they brought into the ports? Are they the situations we saw where, you know, such weapons were found at the ports? Are they one-off? Uh, I, I want to talk about the situation in southern Nigeria. Should we also look at probably the, um, at the Niger Delta militancy to say that was also an avenue for weapons to come in? Uh, because you look at the southern part of Nigeria, it's also a problem when we talk about small arms and uh, light weapons. Yeah, you recall that the origin of this uh, arms in the South started long ago after the Nigerian troops returned from uh, Liberia. Some of them came up, came back with their arms, some of the soldiers, and some of them who had no need to restore them. Not only that, during the agitation for resource control, and some of the major actors, non state actors, also exchanged stolen oil for arms. And uh, well, like we say, we have porous borders. The borders alone, the borders alone, our uh, land borders alone are not the areas to push the uh, arms from. You highlighted it here that some of the arms even come through the ports and the uh, exchange of uh, crude oil, the, the, the arms are uh, uh, exchanged. And uh, so you can see that we had a lot of arms in the in the Niger Delta, for instance, before the government intervened to, to introduce uh, amnesty and uh, in, in, a lot of people surrender their arms. Some didn't surrender, some did their own. And uh, you can see that uh, even as we speak, because of uh, the flagrant display of arms in the north. Some of the people in the Niger Delta are not lost to display their arms now. So I agree with you, there are quite a lot of uh, arms in the in the south, just like it is in the north. Anyway, we are, we are, we are really at war, I, I must say so. Well, uh, let's also look at, you know, legislation uh, in this regard now. So you have the Senate passing the bill for the establishment of national commission for coordination and control of small arms and light weapons. Your thoughts exactly. Do you think that this would actually, you know, help in curbing uh, the excesses? I mean, all that we have right now. Uh, will this solve the problem? Uh, unfortunately, we weren't, weren't able to connect with uh, Mike Ejofo. Hoping that he returns, and I'd like to share his thoughts on this one because it's very, very, very apt. Uh, but, I mean, like we all know, we currently, and over time, have all of these legislations and we have laws, but uh, some people have queried how far we have gone with implementing and recognizing and ensuring that this becomes a thing. 
So uh, there are several concerns. If we have a legislation, if we have, you know, this uh, go through, it becomes uh, you have an establishment or a center that coordinates all of this. Are we going to get this weapons off? Understanding that he's also mentioned the issue of our borders that are very porous as a major concern. Kofi, uh, you know what we say about our borders. I mean, they're just there. Anyone can come in, can go out with anything and anything whatsoever. So with the legislation, uh, does this really solve the problem? You know, um, well, you know, <laughs> the, the laws are, are there, you know, but implementation will always be an issue. Um, it's, it, we've had different government commissions and different uh, inquiries and different um, committees, uh, um, different initiatives by government put together to see how they can, they can bring an end to this. But it's getting worse. It's getting worse. And the reason it's getting worse are the same reasons we have clashes in the country, same reasons why things are not working in the country, because government really is not is almost in a, a non-existent. The reason why it's getting worse is the same reason why, you know, we don't have electricity. It's the same reason why uh, there are no good roads. The same reason why there's no portable drinking or pipe bone water in our communities, in the cities, I mean, in Lagos, for instance, you know, you don't have that. Uh, it's not the same reasons. And um, government isn't getting it right. Government is practically not getting, I mean, people sit down and write laws and have talk shops. What happens at the end of the day? I mean, for, for Osiwa and SBM internet to come out and say, look at the situation. Oh, it's a private, these are private organizations. They don't need to do this, but they're doing this. You know, as a matter of fact, one of the things they highlighted in this report uh, is that um, uh, in their reports is that um, you have weapons. Mercy. You're a Calabar woman, just like me. You know. You do you know you have? Do you, you know you have? You took me off, off the chair. You know you have illegal weapons. This is what they said: illegal weapons. I do. I don't. Factories in Calabar. Mm. Just like you have illegal. Baby, I mean, factories. Not even no, illegal where they baby, make the manu This is what the reports have said over the years, from 2021, that they they manufacture weapons in. They have a factory, a weapon manufacturing factory, in Calabar, peaceful Calabar. Mm -hmm. All right, and also Enugu, peaceful Enugu. In fact, sometimes you can't tell which is more peaceful, Kalaba or Enugu. You know, if you've been to Enugu before. Yes, I have. Uh -huh. So you see that it it's, it has that that Kalaba feel. You understand? And and this is where they have weapons manufacturing factories. You know, uh, so they're saying in the south, south, and southeast, it's difficult to to estimate the number of locally manufactured weapons in this part of country. Uh, uh, so do we do we have government? If we have government. How are people able to wake up and say, we're going to have factories to make weapons, and they're making these weapons? Okay, since SBM and Osiwa came out with these reports in 2021, for instance, um, what has been done since then? What, what has been done? Okay, did anybody in government say, I'm taking this report, and we, see, we went to a uh, local government area, maybe Akwabuyu, and we saw in the forest in Akwabuyu, that this factory, we've, closed, we've shut it down. What have they done with the information? The same information that people who are coming out from terrorist camps, mercy, kidnappers then, are saying, oh, we were kept here, we were kept there. How many of them have they been able to gather to say, give us the intelligence, we're going to catch these people? You, um, we have, but, a, guest, but, we have but, a guest back, by but the But this, this has always yeah. been the issue. Yeah. I mean, we have a guest back. I mean, I, I'd like to share his thoughts on this one. You have... Also, you know, raise some valid consent. Uh, Mike Ejofo, thank you for joining us once again. I apologize for that disconnection on your part. But my question is, is do you think that the legislation will solve any problem at all, especially when we have other factors? For instance, you have mentioned the issue of our borders that are very porous. <laughs> what difference will it make? And also, you know, with enforcement, what difference would the legislation make? I don't see any difference. The laws are there to check uh, control of uh, arms. Uh, except you, of course, make the punishment stiffer, but it's not going to make any difference. What we need now is enforcement to ensure the control of the arms, you know, prevent them from coming now, more of the ones already inside. Uh, apart from that, I don't see what legislation is going to uh, do to. And uh, in fact, uh, like I said, the laws are there. Possibly we should look at the judiciary, you know, by ensuring that uh, those arrested are speedily tried and the uh, cases concluded. 
Just a follow up to you know what you have actually said. The laws are there. Enforcement is what we need. Why have we not been enforcing? Why is it such a big deal to enforce the laws in our country? I mean, this is not just limited to, you know, having the uh, control of small arms and weapons and what have you. It cuts across the entire country. Enforcement is a big deal. What exactly is the issue with enforcement? You see, there are several reasons for, you know, lack of uh, enforcement, you know, on our laws. Not just only arms uh, control. One is a uh, a slow judicial process. Our prisons or correctional facilities, as it's addressed now, are congested. We have a lot of cases. Cases can drag up to 20 years, whereas the offender who ordinarily wouldn't have stand up to that uh, number of years in prison. And so we, we need to look at the judicial process, look at the correctional facilities, the congested among the those who are guilty should be convicted and uh, strictly convicted, and uh, those who are free should be let to go. Because you discover that even some of them who are in custody, when they come out, they become more hardened, you know, because of the conditions. So we need to improve the conditions and welfare of the uh, workers of the correctional facilities and even the inmates. All right, Mike, uh, Omar Musa Adwa, you know, came out as president, the late Musa, Omar Musa Adwa, uh, um, you know, introduced the amnesty program uh, in the Niger Delta as a way of tackling the militancy uh, issue, which, of course, you say uh, played no small part in, 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 in the proliferation of arms, even though their weapons are not that small or light, but it's still a problem. I mean, he initiated this, initiated this amnesty program in 2009, and we're well aware of what, you know, how much has been spent, you know, look at the humongous amounts being spent or have been spent to maintain this amnesty program. Um, the video, I remember, you know, in River State when Amishi, uh, uh, uh joined, you know, some federal government officials to, to receive uh, weapons um, from the likes of Farada Gogo and uh, uh, Barry Papa and co. Um, but still, um, I can tell you that in Port Harcourt, we still have weapons, you know, hidden in places that uh, uh, we'll mention on, on air. But what, what happened if the amnesty program, which is a lot of investment, was meant to address this problem, at least from the point of the Niger Delta? Uh, why has it not worked? Well, I wouldn't say it's not working. The truth is that there's no society or environment without... Uh Criminals operating. When uh, uh, President, late President Yaradoa instilled that amnesty and people came and surrendered their arms, they exchanged for payment of uh, amnesty and they were granted amnesty. You see, the fact remains that it has achieved this result because our oil, which the mainstay of the Nigerian economy, has not been disrupted ever since, apart from few occasional uh, disruptions. You know, where there's a disagreement between the oil prospecting companies, the multinational banks, and uh, the communities where they operate, where they ask for corporate social responsibility. And the, the, the fact is that uh, the oil, well, the crude oil, there are not a major disruption from the agitators. But the fact is, how long can we continue to maintain this? That is the problem. Because immediately they stop the amnesty. And the amnesty is not being funded again. The Niger Delta Development Commission, the LDDC, uh, the board has not been constituted. So these are areas that are likely to spring up uh, fresh agitation. And I believe that the government should also look at this in the of. All right, oh. it seems we, we have a bit of a, a freeze. Uh, Michael Jeffo, can you hear me? Okay, we, we seem to have lost. Uh, uh, him the picture there telling us that. So, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the, the, the point I was trying to, or question I was asking, I was saying, you know what, um, at least uh, the, the amnesty program was meant to, you You wouldn't just come and say, uh, give me amnesty. You're coming with your gun. You say, okay, these are my weapons, take them uh, as a sign that I'm not going to fight to continue the agitations anymore. But you still have a proliferation of weapons. I won't just call them small weapons, small arms, or light weapons, but you have weapons 
in the Niger Delta. It's still there. They're still there. So um, I don't know. I wanted to get his views. They didn't give us all their guns. They gave some. <laughs> there was a, a, a notorious um, um, sort of, uh, I don't know if he's a militant or a cultist, but um, um, Don Wani, who Wiki declared wanted some time ago. Um, if you see the weapons he submitted to government when they were doing an amnesty drive. But this was the same person who, no, uh, who, who whose, whose um, boys were wreaking havoc in a part of River State. So, so maybe, maybe these these uh, you know freedom fighters, as they like to be called, didn't turn in their weapons. No, to but but, but, but Kofi, to, to be very honest, I think that he answered the question you know the way it is. He's raised a concern, and the issue is with the implementation because, however you see it, we we'll talk about the issue of governance. So even if you have, uh, you know, program of amnesty and. As it were, people are supposed to surrender their weapons and what have you. But on the other hand, government is supposed to also have, you know, a system where they checkmate whether or not these arms, those who have actually said were submitting, are doing the need for. That's where that's where the problem lies. And so, with all of the laws and loft, uh, lofty policies that we have, uh, the issue is still very big on, you know, having implementation. So we have issue of following and ensuring that. Uh, the things that I say, the policies are followed to the latter. It cuts across. Like you mentioned earlier on, you talked about the reason why we don't have power supply. The reason why buildings are collapsing every other time in Lagos and across different parts of the country, it's because of the issue of having agencies. We have the laws. We have different ministries and parastatals. We have those who are, you know, heading the affairs of, uh, you know, I mean, they're calling the shorts now. But... Are we following to ensure that we have all of these things done to the latter? Are we implementing? Are we monitoring all of that? That's where the problem lies. Because it's okay for people to just say things and then we have agencies, but I mean, who's looking at what? Who's looking at what's going on? Uh, for the want of time, we need to take a break now. When we return, it'll be time for us uh, to look at our second conversation briefly ahead of the 2023 general elections. Please stay with us.